Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over a couple minor changes and cleanups to the camera. We're going to make it collide against walls and the environment, and we're also going to make it so that we can zoom in and out to a minimum and maximum range with some smoothing in there to make sure the entire system works well within the game. Now, following that, we are going to go over what we're doing next, as this will be the end of the character animation series, as we're just cleaning up. Though, I will preface this by saying that the code that we'll be pushing up to GitHub later on, either later this week or even maybe today, I'll be commenting all the code and cleaning it up, so that that way the GitHub is nice and packaged and good to go for anyone in the future who wants to use it. Then we'll go over what we'll be going into next week and the following weeks. But for now, let's go ahead and hop into Godot here. And we've got our basic camera set up as it was. I went ahead and added a Raycast 3D and I just pointed it in the general direction of the camera here. And I set the target position to a Z of positive 10. This is important as we'll be sliding this in and out later with the zoom function. So making sure that the Z is the number that we're zooming in and out. And then the X and Y are just flat zero to begin with. Now, we are going to have to change a couple things for the camera controller, so we'll go ahead and hop in there and we'll be adding in a couple attachments to the camera and the Raycast as well as some variables for moving things around, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, and we're going to start with a couple of exports. The first one is going to be a camera node, and this is just going to be the reference to the actual camera object, so we're going to make it a camera 3D to make sure we don't get confused. Then we're going to add in a camera collision ray, and that's going to be a Raycast 3D. And following this, we're going to need about six floats. The first one is going to be camera zoom desired speed. This is going to be essentially our mouse sensitivity. Then we have camera zoom blend speed, and this is going to be the speed at which the actual zoom adjusts to what the intended zoom is. Then we're going to have camera fast zoom blend speed, and this is going to be that same zoom blend speed, but when we are moving towards the player, that way we can zoom in quickly to avoid poking through walls. Following this, we're going to need three more, and that's going to be minimum zoom speed, maximum zoom speed, and then, of course, raycast impact offset. Sorry, I said speed, I meant distance. This is going to be our minimum and maximum range, as well as the impact offset to make sure that we poke away from the wall. We're not too close to the wall. We don't want the camera sitting right on the wall, so we're just going to bump it out a little bit based off of the normal of whatever collider that we're colliding with. Following this, we're going to go ahead and create one more private variable, and that's going to be a current zoom distance. And we're just going to set this in the ready function to be the what the minimum zoom distance is. Alrighty, and then following this, we're going to go ahead and change the input function, and we're going to go ahead and capture that scroll wheel action. So first, we're going to create a new if statement. We're just going to say if input event is input event mouse button. And then again, in C sharp, this is going to actually be casting it, whereas in Godot script, we can just use it as is. And within that input event mouse if statement, we're going to create another if statement and we're going to say if mouse event dot button index equals mouse button dot wheel up or in Godot script, that's going to be if event dot button index equals mouse button wheel up. And then all we're going to do is we're going to subtract from the zoom distance desired from the current zoom distance by the camera zoom desired speed. And we're going to clamp that between the minimum and the maximum zoom distance. Following that, we're going to do an else if and say if it's wheeled down, that is zooming out, we're going to add to that zoom distance the camera zoom desired speed. And once again, we're going to clamp that. You can just copy paste. It'll make things a little bit easier. And following that, we're just going to go on down to the bottom of the physics process function. And we're going to add a couple lines here. So first off, we're going to check and change the camera collision ray dot target position to what the current zoom distance is. So that's new vector 300 and then the Z axis being the current zoom distance. 
Then we're going to check to see if the camera collision ray is colliding. And if it is, we're going to create a new vector three variable called target position. And this target position is going to be the collision ray dot get collision point plus the collision ray dot get collision normal multiplied by the offset. This is going to push it away from the collision point. Following that, we're going to go ahead and check to see if the distance to the target position is less than the distance from the camera node to the collision ray. This is just going to say we're moving towards the collision ray as opposed to away from it. And if that's the case, then we're going to go ahead and take the camera node and we're going to take its global position and we're going to linearly interpolate that to the target position based off of the camera fast zoom speed. And if that is not the case, we're going to go ahead and linearly interpolate it to the target position using the normal camera zoom speed. This is just going to be if we're zooming out or if the camera is rotating away from the target along an angle wall. Next up, we're going to put an else statement down below all of that, and we're just going to say if we're not colliding with anything, go ahead and move towards whatever the camera collision ray target position currently is in global space. This is just going to allow for actual zooming in and out when we're not colliding with a wall, and we're going to use the camera zoom blend speed for this. That way it zooms slowly if you're just scrolling in and out, but it zooms fast if it's running into a wall. And that's pretty much going to be it. We should be good to go. All right, and we're back in Godot. So we have a couple new variables here. We can go ahead and throw in the camera and raycast like we already have. But then we do need to go ahead and set some of these variables. So I'm just going to set them to what I have tested as working good. You can, of course, modify this to whatever fits your game and however you want it to be. But that's pretty much it. If we go ahead and hit play real quick. All right, so now we can zoom in, we can zoom out. And if we move in front of an object, we obviously collide with that object. And it's a pretty smooth transition in any case. And I'm pretty pleased with that. That's not too bad. Obviously, there's a little bit of clipping there. That's if you increase the fast zoom speed, that wouldn't be the case. But for the time being, at least, this isn't too bad. So this is where we're going to leave it for the animation series. We may come back to it later if the demand for something in specific is high enough. But for the time being, at least, this is where we're going to leave it. Now, moving forward. So I wanted to do several tutorial series, but I ended up deciding that the best course of action would be a tutorial series over the course of just making a game. And a lot of my viewers had been requesting things pertaining to procedural animation and things of that nature. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new series that is going to be a first person survival based game. And we're just going to make a game from the ground up. It'll just be a vertical slice. So it's just going to be a small portion of the game. But we want all of the base mechanics in there. Now exactly what those base mechanics are I'm leaving up in the air for now. I'm not going to worry too much about details and I'm going to just kind of explore through the process. And so to cultivate this, what I'm going to do is every week I'm going to do either C Sharp or Godot script, and I'm going to bounce back and forth between those. Now I am going to progress with a C Sharp script first method. So I will be doing the C Sharp first, and then the next week doing the Godot script for the same thing. I'll be keeping these projects into two separate folders so that that way we can have everything be nice and clean. And anyone who wants the Godot script version can follow that. And anyone who wants the C Sharp script version can follow 
all of that. I think that this is the best way to move forward with a larger project like this. Now, this will mean that week over week, we are have, going to have slightly slower progress, but I think that this is allowing us to do a little bit more in-depth on those subjects. Also, entirely unrelated to that, I wanted to thank all of you for reaching the 500 subscriber milestone. I'm actually right at it now. I think I'm like two subscribers off, so probably by the time you see this video, it'll be up. So thank you all so much for that. It means a lot to me. But yeah, so I hope you all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all back here next week for that tutorial series.